Being um, seven o'clock, I'd like to open the meeting to the Bellingham Board of Health for October 18, 2022. Myself, the employee chair, Vice Chair Trish LeClaire, member at Mike Hennessy, health agent Bruce Wilson, tobacco and food agent Robert Griffin, the food agent. First order of business is the um, well, I guess the tobacco regulation. Robbie, do we have anything? We do. So my conversations with town council were just that what we had presented at the meeting was was approved. We just had to physically write it down. And I never heard back um, outside of the fact that she would not be able to attend tonight's meeting. So I am assuming what we have is fine because we did clearly define what it was um, as well as what, what the amendment would be. So the amendment would read, uh, no person shall sell or otherwise distribute any mind-altering substances as defined herein within the town of Bellingham, and then the definition of mind-altering substance being any non-prescription product naturally or natural or synthetically created that does not have FDA and pharmacopoeia approval, uh, that has psychedelic, psychotropic, or hallucinogenic properties. Examples of these products include Delta-8, Delta-10, and Kratom. We're going to leave out anything created from... Uh... Laboratory, either from plant, animal, or any other substances. We um, we can include we, that. We had, we had we had just put it down to to natural, natural or synthetic. Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, I guess that'll work. I mean, if we spell out plant or animal. It can't. It's coming from a natural source. That would, I guess. Uh, okay, we'll we'll just live with that. So um. So I guess um. I should open the public hearing, right? And then Rob, can you read that off again? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so I'd like to open the public hearing for the um, tobacco regulation for the amendment to cover that piece of the amendment which was left out, which was mind altering substances that would now be called. Okay, go ahead, Rob. Uh, so it would be no person shall sell or otherwise distribute any mind-altering substances as defined herein within the town of Bellingham. And the definition of mind-altering substance, uh, according to the board, is any non-prescription product, natural or synthetically created, that does not have FDA and pharmacopoeia approval, that has psychedelic, psychotropic, or hallucinogenic properties. Examples of these products include Delta-8, Delta-10, and Kratom. Any... Uh... Comments from you, Trish or Mike, on that? No, I think it sounds good. It's okay. it's kind of it what too. the original was, um, just definitely more defined. So it is defined. Yes, agreed. I'm good yeah. with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me just check. Do you guys have anything to add to our tobacco amendment? Okay. Okay. Fine. So. Um, being there's no other comments from the public, um, I guess I will cl close the public hearing. Uh, right, we'll close it before we vote on it. Yeah, okay. I'll close the public hearing. No more information will be added. And then um, being 705, it's public hearing is now closed. Now I'd like to have a motion from one of the members to approve the writings of verbiage that Robert Griffin has spelled out. Uh, so, Rish, Mike, if you want okay. to Okay, yeah, I can, I can do it. So I make a motion to approve um, the verbiage that Robbie Griffin had spoken of um, in regards to, um, was it our, our tobacco regs? With right. the public hearing. Okay. Have a second on that, Mike. Is this for, for the motion or just the wording? Uh, it's the wording. Well, actually, the wording we have had it, you know, spelled out during the public hearing. So that's what we're going to approve. But Trish has uh, made the motion. So now you want to change something or? 
No, I mean the the wording's the the wording is 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 fine. I, I'm not going to approve the motion though. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. So. Um, okay. So uh, I guess in that case, uh, we'll <laughs> vote on that the motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Okay. Okay. So it passes two to one. Uh, the motion and the uh, verbiage will be added to our regulation uh, effective immediately. Okay, um, thank you. So the next item is, um, I guess, a minutes approval. Or do we want to, yeah, we'll do we'll do the minutes next from uh, September twentieth. I've already read them, so I don't know if any of you guys had a chance to read them. Yeah, I had to read them too, Vinny. So, okay. Mike, did you read them or? Yes, I'm all good. Okay. okay, so I'd like to make a motion that we approve our uh, minutes from our last meeting. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The same, so carry, thank you. Okay, next item, I guess it's not 7.30, but we have a 7.40 Pulaski Boulevard condemnation. Um, from what I've been told from Laura that the, uh, Registered mail was returned to us because they cannot serve a uh, post office box. We've made, I guess, a few other attempts to get in touch with them, unable to do that. So I guess the condemnation will stay in place. Um, we have 30 days, I believe it's 30 days now, for him to come down, get building permits, uh, plumbing permits, uh, electrical permits to fix everything. Um, and again, he has to probably have someone come in and rid the thing of mold, uh, which basically is a health hazard. Someone's working in that building to renovate it. Um, and um, we haven't determined yet whether it's on septic or whether it's on sewer. Uh, and the other thing, too, and Bruce's follow up was um, what we're all in cars going there. A good majority of them have okay. been working with it. Okay, so there's still vehicles there. Yeah. From Lab Automotive, which moved to Uxbridge. And um, the other thing was the oil is gone. Yeah, oil. Uh, there was some spillage, you know. Yeah, small. small well, okay. So there's some spillage, which probably, you know, the owner can cover that up and then dig it up. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, just to make sure it doesn't get into the nearby wetlands and groundwater. Okay, so I guess. Um, I'm just going to let what we did with the condemnation and the following the words, uh, let's say pages that address the, the reason for condemnation as it stands as follows until uh, further notice until he comes in and gets permits and then before he rents it. So, okay. So, I guess that's it. Uh, you guys have anything to add to the 740 Pulaski? No, I'm good. Okay. Fish, you're good. Okay, we'll just leave that as it goes. Okay. Um, I guess next thing is nothing on updates is new business. Um, discuss the meeting cancellation process. I kind of would like to know that, you know, when the meeting's getting canceled, that at least the chair or the vice chair gets the way in, um, you know, and not find out a day or two before the meeting's been canceled. So, uh, we didn't have a lot of our items on there, but um, you know, it's just we should have an organized fashion of how we condemn meetings, how to condemn meetings, uh, cancel meetings. And um, I think, you know, at least the chair, vice chair, uh, should be notified, and then subsequently the other members and um, the rest of the board. I, I agree with you, Vinny. So, in the past, if a yeah. meeting was even questioning being canceled, it's supposed to be ran by all board members to make sure right. that they're okay with that. Yeah. Because you cancel a meeting and then push it out and the next right. meeting, those people aren't available, then it gets pushed out even farther. So it should not be canceled without going through the board first. And the other thing too is, you know, had there been a plan or something like that, you know, it doesn't mean we can't come down, but it's better to do the governmental business at a 
totalitarian and you know just you know, me in the arm. So anyway, uh, okay, guess that's over. So the next thing over is a, is a flu clinic uh, tomorrow, October 19th, at the town hall. It's the lobby area. Mm -hmm. In the lobby area between 1 and 4 p.m. So it'll be right here in the arcade. Yeah, right here in the arcade. Yep. So all those who want one, come on down. And by the way, it's free. So anyway. Okay, so let's see. Um, tobacco update, agent updates. Robbie, do you have anything? Uh, not presently. We will be, I was kind of waiting for this amendment to, to wrap up, um, but we will be doing more compliance checks shortly. Um, so I will have more updates for you soon. Okay. The other thing that uh, someone had mentioned, I don't know if it was last meeting or now at this meeting, um, there was mention that the BP station across from the school was selling um, smoking pipes. I said, well, you can't, you can sell smoking pipes, I guess, without tobacco, but it does seem kind of strange, you know, and as Marilyn would say, crack pipes, but we would just call them smoking <laughs> paraphernalia. Um, I don't know. Did you end, end up going down there or was that old business? Yeah, so so uh, it, it was dealt with, I believe, last month. Um, the establishment is not selling any tobacco products, period, at okay. this point. Um, they were looking or pursuing <laughs> further action because there was a question about whether or not the uh, permit would actually be by the franchise or the franchisee, there is a franchise. Um, so they're, they are working on, on that situation, but that is, that is the only update at this point. They are, they are not selling anything currently. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Food inspections, Ravi. Um, can I add something first? Uh, you know, I, not the previous uh, Monday or, or Sunday, whatever it was, um, but two weeks ago from Sunday, I had gone into uh, Market Basket, and again, the stuff was stacked up. Again, they have a new manager, but um, the new manager uh, had me see a guy that was the dairy manager. Not the young kid who told me that he wasn't going to do it, but another gentleman, and I have never met him, so... I asked him to move everything. He says, I will. And he actually went himself and then got one other employee and they moved everything. It was not only cheese, it was milk, um, yogurt, uh, various cheese. There was also the, the loose cheese called ricotta, not the bagged or shredded cheese. And that's in a different area where the milk and the dairy products are. Um, and he also said that someone was stacked up like 15 inches high so that you get a right angle that's outside the cold zone. He said, that shouldn't be like that. And I said, wow. I said, go ahead and take care of that. I said, but I'm just curious. I'm, I'm just insisting that everything that definitely outlined inside the zone and not right angle to it. I said, but if you'd like to do that, I said, that would be a, a benefit to the product, having a, a good long shelf life and not spoil it. So um, you can carry that on. I, I went and did the quarterly inspection there. Yeah. And then a vast improvement. I spent a considerable amount of time in the dairy in the okay. section with the, with the thermometer and, yeah. and, and shot everything. So maybe so he's, yeah, he's, he's got the, yeah. all, all the vents and everything were all exposed yeah. Yeah. so that yeah. you get the proper airflow. I you know I, I reached in the field to make sure you right. can feel the airflow. Right. I shot Rob, the, whatever happened. I know you're going to talk to them and give them um, maybe some ideas on doing closed in refrigerating, kind of like stop and shop. Did you ever talk to them about that? I know Bruce and I had had mentioned that to them. I know we, we did it on, on separate occasions, um, but they had just said that it was too too costly of a um, option because these those coolers apparently are astronomically priced and they would have to. Um, I don't know if it's a replumbing issue, but the the where they are present currently set up, they would not be able to put the same for it. To, 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 to finish my, my statement there, um, I, I shot each of the products, but I also shot the back of the cabinet. They've chilled the cabinet down to about wow. six or so, so that it's got colder, you know, air. colder okay. air. Um, and all of, all of the products were 38, 39 degrees, which you know is low within yeah. tolerance. Yeah, the other thing too is I. Ask them like where the uh, the 
hard cheeses are. I said, if you put that little rail, they, they put a rail where all the milk was and most of the other products. If they put that little white rail, which is not hard to add, uh, that would solve that problem. Uh, because, you know, it, what happens is they're stacking it like, I don't know, it's block cheese or bag cheese or contain, containers of cheese. And that stuff, either somebody pulls it or they're just stacking it from the bottom grid all the way up. Unlike the other products, they really can't do that now. Uh, they can, but it's less likely to do it if you have like a four to five inch rail. It just simply, um, I guess, mesh tubular steel and it's coated with plastics. But I think they screw it in because they're not welding it. They screw it into the uh, the chassis of the uh, cooler. And it, it was a great idea. That happened about a year ago. But, um, and that led to a lot less complaints by me and other people who were going in there and said, you know, the product was all over the place, you know. And also it prevents it from falling on the floor if somebody pulls something from the bottom. So anyway, well, let's hope that, you know, we'll see the same continued. Yeah, the, 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 I think the new manager um, yeah, he is, is, is going to put a better effort for it yeah, yeah. after speaking. Yeah. Um, I, I did spend considerable time with him. I would like to suggest that if they do renovations in the future, that that's something that we that we push for. Yeah. And I feel like at some point they have to start doing renovations over there. Yeah, those coolers are quite old. The whole place is. I don't know when it was built, but it's old. It's probably eighties. I don't know. Anyway, okay. Anything else? Uh, Rob or Bruce on food. I don't know. Okay. Rob, you have anything else on food or no? So far, I mean, so far, so good. Places have been have been behaving, so we haven't really had any any major issues to report. And I guess uh, the other thing is, uh, Pete's Bluebird is closing, or he's, have they closed? Yeah, he's retired. Okay. Fine. Is there any yeah. news on the uh, new restaurant going into Rock and Coal? Um, not yet, Mike, but I, I, I think they're in there doing a lot of um, internal work, moving things around and stuff. I, I know they have permits, um, and I think um, uh, either Tim or his assistant have been in, in to do some preliminary inspections. And they will have to get a new permit, right? Yeah, yeah, it'll be. Yeah. Now, will the license just transfer over? Uh, the liquor license, I'm not sure, but the, the, the other license, I mean, they'll be replying for their own separate food yeah. food license. Um, we've sent out all the renewals and, and a good majority of them are already coming back. We have uh, quite a bit of um, activity in the permitized in the last few days. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right, yeah I think, just, uh, it's just, just me, let me know. Go ahead. Sorry. It's Go just ahead. me not knowing. Now that, that um, Pete's is closing, is that going to be another yeah. liquor license in the town? Good question. I don't know. I'll have to check with the, the select board. Yeah. yeah so Mike, the select board does that, not us. Okay. All right. The other thing, Mike, uh, just to let you know, is, you know, I, I think in the past we've discouraged uh, having a food license or a tobacco license transfer over. You know, they okay. have to get a new one. So we have the name, the proper owner, you know, especially when doing compliance checks. We don't want someone lateraling over. So, you know. Correct. Right. So I think that we solved years ago. Anyway, we'll get correspondence. We have uh, uh, October, November. I had a question about the vaping permits and what we were going to do with the fee if oh, they yeah. have a tobacco permit. I just wanted to make that clear as to how we were going to start doing that. Yeah. Rob, how are we doing it? I guess. So for this year, unfortunately, council and I are still working on the, um, the vaping license because of the fact that they are not sure where the line basically ends as to, to the ends products. So because of the way that the state defines the products and the way that we have defined the products, the it encompasses everything, which is why we had this issue with the permit. So we are still working with council to try to figure out what the best way to word it basically is as to not create more issues. What we had originally discussed was doing a half year permit for this year at half cost. So it would be $400 for next year, which is the cost of a tobacco license and $200 for this year because they were starting in July. 
um, but at this point, we're still trying to figure out the wording on the permits. It's it's kind of opening more and more cans of worms as we're going. And the permit wording is because we're stricter than state or? The way that the state, the problem we run into is that the way that the state defines vapes or, or ends products um, is anything that is consumed via a vape. So even if it doesn't contain nicotine or tobacco, it, it covers everything. Um, but the town council is of the opinion that that is incorrect. So um, it's, it's more of a, I believe, town council disagrees with the state than disagrees with us, but um, they are trying to figure out the best way to, to figure that out. Okay, so they'll marry up the two different, let's say, points of view or regulations. And then we'll we'll add that as our regulation for vapor smoking. Okay. Um, so the next thing was October, November employee. Um, oh, oh, uh, Vinny, uh, I need to squeeze in before that. Uh, okay. The food inspector updates. Okay. Um, I have Mr. Manning and Ms. Green here in the audience okay. where they've been asked to come. They're in one of the, the uh, units at the Charles. Okay. Um, okay. I had fined them a hundred dollars for leaving the trash outside the door rather than it going into the dumpster. Okay. Um, I've since spoken with Rick, the the maintenance guy, yeah. and they they finally you know been cooperating with him and getting the, the material and the and the debris put into the uh, the dumpster properly. Okay. Um, I would like to you know make a motion to rescind the fine. They've been very cooperative in okay. working with them. Okay. Um, I don't know if you need to take a vote or something. On yeah. That, but, um, so, I don't know if you heard that, Trish. So, what happened yeah, was the stuff was not getting in the dumpster. They, they were leaving it outside the door. Okay. Right. Um, and not taking it down to the dumpster. Okay. Okay. So, so, how long did this go on for, though? That's. Go ahead, like, Trish. Or for us to have to issue a fine. I'm, I got complaints from a couple of the people on the same floor, um, and I went out and I witnessed that the, the, the debris was there, so I issued a fine. Um, I received probably two or three complaints during that period of time. Um, since then, Rick has worked with them and explained to them, you know, how the how the, the facility works, and you know that I would be continually to return and issue more fines if they didn't start to, uh, you know, use the dumpster properly. We just had a lot of problems there. Um, so I kind of have a hard time with that. But I mean, what do you think, Mike? We were the, we're, we're the with complaint the that we had with the Charles and people and trash and how much of a nightmare that was. I didn't hear any of that, no. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess, I don't know, Vinny, what do you think? I don't know. This was the problems we had with the Charles was there was no person, let's say in the office in front that was, how do I say it, in charge of me. So they, they weren't emptying the dumpsters. Right. They weren't emptying the litter, what do you call them? Dog, dog, dog waste out of the dog, dog waste out. Like and then people were just putting anything out of the dumpster. Well, they couldn't get in the dumpster for furniture. So they just left it on the side of the road, side of buildings. Um, I take it this is an internal matter. So it's an apartment. This was up in, yeah. in the hallway. Um, so, since Rick came on, he's been on probably, what, about six, seven months now? That was <laughs> December. Yeah. yeah. OK, yeah. I and there's been vast improvements over okay. there. So, um, and this yeah. is the, yeah. the finest, not the child. It's good. No, I had fine. I find okay. the tenant. So Trish, I guess the fine is not with the child. It was the resident that was yeah. leaving the trash yep. in the hallway. So I don't know. Um, is, I mean, if, is if the do, oh, had Mike. Sorry. Is the it, was, was the issues with them leaving the trash out? Was it because of the the the, ne the neglect from the property managers, or is it was exactly. it? Can I answer it, that. Yeah. Yep, the, 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 like, yeah, they want to answer. They want so here's the thing. Yes, it is the issue with the dumpster being over from the compactor being broken. As well and as the, the cardboard, cardboard being overflowing. The cardboard 
is a 10 yard dumpster for, I think it's 200, 200 you guys 198 apartments, like a apartment. every two weeks. It, oh, it fills up when one person moves in or out. The other issue when it's trash is being left out for maybe a few hours at a time, because I work, Brittany's disabled and she can't leave the twins or bring trash down with the twins. Every time we clean, right. I mean, we empty trash and there's what? Four trash barrels oh, in the house. We have six people in that apartment. So. so she can't realistically carry two babies, six trash bags when we only have one car and I have it at the house. Right. She can't walk from our building all the way up to the factor. Am I supposed to leave the babies in the, Even when I have the car and like, am I supposed to leave the babies in the car while I go get the trash? Am I supposed to leave them in the apartment while I go get the trash? Um, so. Trish, back to the student. Trish, it's back to the same thing at this point. At this point, um, his name Rick. Rick, yeah. Rick, Mark. And I mean, there is still trash issues all the time. There, it is still overflowed where we go to take it out and we would be littering if we went to leave it by the compactor or we would be littering the cardboard if we went to leave it in the overflowing cardboard dumpster. And it's ridiculous because the neighbors right next door to us, they leave a trash bag out all the time. It doesn't bother me, it's a trash bag, right. but he's a single guy who could easily every day when he goes to work, throw it away. And no one, he hasn't gotten one message from anybody from yeah, the board. No one's asking him about this. Uh, it's disabled. I got photos from yeah. multiple units with trash sitting out. And that's just me leaving my apartment, walking down the hall and going out the door. What that's not looking at the building. So, so what I'm going to suggest then is we send a letter to the Charles and they should be sending a letter to everybody because, you know, it's you're leaving your trash out in the hall, but it's also a fire hazard too. You know, right, and if you want also, another yeah. person, another person's doing it, it just becomes a bigger issue. Right. So I think that we need to, um, you know, reach out to the Charles and they need to send a letter. To I do think a big part of the issue is, is that it's still not, it is much better. Rick does handle it every morning, but every Sunday night, you can't put your garbage where it needs to go. You just can't. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to let my kids get into my garbage. Like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Even when he is home to take it out, it's like, I'm not going to go actually litter where animals could get it. Right. You know? Um, and that, that us, you know, telling the Charles to send a letter to the tenants and that they, they need to be on top of their trash because now we're getting complaints that their trash is overflowed again. And that's yeah. not okay because we've already had issues with that. And if you so, look at the compactor, they put a wall up right next to the button that you hit to start the thing. But you look behind that, all and it's furniture. all furniture, tires. Yeah, It's all garbage right. back there that's been there for months. And the last problem I have with this is that we were told by Rick that the person sending you guys these photos was a maintenance man who is no longer working with the company that lives on our floor. And he actually is now accused of starting a fire in his apartment to possibly try to burn the building down, stealing their equipment. Rick said he tries stealing to just keys. start yeah, stealing apartment keys, like unit keys. Rick says that he just tries to start problems with people to make their life hell because he gets enjoyment out of it. I don't, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know if, if I, the I think is, that that's I like think, uh, in our category anyway, but. But it just doesn't seem like that. even the people sending the photos are really That's a credible people to, like sources of I, information either. I would say that, that might mean, we send a letter to the Charles, like like um Trisha said. I know you know other establishments around town we we've sent citations for overflowing trash trash flowing outside the barrel you know we had you know the the issues with the the donation bins and stuff being outside uh i th i think we we take you know i go i go with what trish said send a letter to the charles have them handle it it seems to be an issue with with the charles and people throwing stuff away that shouldn't be thrown away right yeah and i mean we can't have they can't have tenants just leaving their trash it, it you know it's not just this couple that's there, it sounds like it's a lot of people that do it. Yeah, and that I have photos of at least four or five apartments. That's just the 10 that I pass every day. Okay. It, so, it's not, especially if the trash is full. The reason why you're not being able to take your trash down is because the trash is full. Like, and everybody else has the same problem, then they need another dumpster or something. Right. So, so the compactor breaks, they don't have a backup. Okay, with reaching out to him. Um, even shoot them an email or whatever, just 
letting him know to reach out to the tenants and that we're already getting complaints that there's an issue with the trash being full. Are you okay um, with it? I'm going to take another visit down there. Yeah. Yeah. Supposedly yeah. they have a new manager on site too. Yeah, the Trish, the other thing Trish and Mike is. But we need something, right? We can't just verbally go down there and talk to someone. We need both. So you yeah, can I'll, send. I'll hand carry a letter along. I, I think okay. you, you pointed out an issue. Or he did. Um, the Sunday night issue. It's the case where the guy comes, picks up one time. Yeah. Remember, it's not like town trash. It's every Thursday or Friday or Wednesday. Yeah. Um, it's, they're supposed to be picking up that dumpster, whatever size it is. And all the dumpsters routinely. And it looks like without the holiday being here, it's getting filled by Sunday night. And that means they're right. You leave trash outside the bins, the animals will rip it to shreds. It'll be blowing down North Main Street. So I think that Charles needs to, they can send letters out to everybody, but they need to make sure that when a resident takes the time, even well, at the end of the day, to go there, they can put it in the dumpster. Well, the issue is that the compactor is overflow. It's not like it's there's no to put it. They, they have one dumpster for cardboard, and that's a 10 yard dumpster right. that you can't put anything other than cardboard. They can right. still throw trash in, and they leave trash all around. And then it goes in the woods, it feels backyard on Main Street. Yeah. Then you get the environmental, you get the wetland behind us yeah. um, that they just put a dumpster next to a pod that's supposed to be in an area for an emergency vehicle turnaround. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's not to you guys. Trash just... in the dumpster. It's only for their renovations. And like, I used to work in dumpster rentals. The fact that they have such small dumpsters for cardboard and these aren't getting, you know, dumped twice a week. This is like once every other week. Yeah. How can you expect it to knock it? Like, it's just the yeah. math is not math. Every, yeah. all the apartments that moves out of that, that complex, the apartments are getting renovated. renovated. The renovated <laughs> material, the construction materials are getting left either right outside the apartment. Or in the hallway, I had to call the fire department a, about a year and a half ago because they left the space of about two feet to get through. Yeah, I got a complaint from someone yeah. when I went down there. This happened to be the holiday, you know, right after Christmas. But for that seven day period, the renovated pot materials were blocking the exit door. Yeah. You need to get out if you're, you can't go to the other end of the building if you're on this end, you know, egress, ingress. You have to have space to walk by. Yeah, they had floor material sitting on the sidewalk outside. So, Trish, well, Mike, uh, what do you want to make a, a motion? I'm going to make I'm going to make a mo uh, motion uh, to dismiss the fine and to hold the uh, facility accountable and have them be subject to more expe uh, more inspections and possibly having them get other dumpsters. I know when I know when Rick came on. Tim, myself, and Chris Milo had gone over and talked to a new manager, but they've gone through three managers yeah. since then. So I think maybe uh, the three of us get together and yeah. meet the new manager and explain what's going on. Maybe yeah. we'll have some better results. Too. They, they have a well, new manager I every was, I thought it was the new guy, Bruce, that we had at our last meeting. It's not the same guy. No, they've had three no. since. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is the only guy like, that's common now since last year. Yeah, don't get attached to the managers, just talk to Rick. And, and, and I, I moved in about a, we moved about a year and a half ago. Yeah, and ever since the original manager had cancer and had to quit, they've gone through, I want to say, at least three. Oh, it's four. been no, the last seven. Like, since the summer. At least. Yeah. It, every and I've couple of months, there's a years. new manager. So Remember that's that kind of cool. Cool. So yeah, it's if, on top of it. Yes. If, so I'm fine with that, um, Mike. However, if, you know, they do start for some, you know, godforsaken good reason that they would uh, get the dumpsters cleaned out, you know, twice a week or something instead of every other. Um, I know the, I, I know the is compactor is, is, is in desperate need of being replaced, and I'll strongly recommend to them that they, they put a, a better uh, compactor in there and probably a larger one. Trish, if you remember so that compactor was the one that was like is, years old. If the trash is being cleaned out and people continue to leave their trash in the hall, then we, we will find because yeah, there is that's fine. Yep. Use. Okay, I'm okay um, with that. We don't want people to think that they can leave their trash in the hall and you know, other people, if this is an issue, because it's it's easy, you know what I mean? Um 
and think that we're going to do this for everyone. So no, because no. That this has happened and it's being brought to our attention, I'm fine with with uh, taking the fine away. But okay, so you'll second that, Trish. Yeah, I second that. Okay. Okay, all those in favor of relieving the fine, I say aye. Aye. I oppose the same. So carried. Okay, thank you. You, you guys are my eyes. If you see something, yeah. I don't yeah. just feel like okay. you could call me, email me. Are you, I'm Bruce. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So call Laura or Bruce at the office. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you know if it's ongoing. Like I said, I have photos. It's, it's difficult when it's inside the building because I don't necessarily patrol the insides right. of the yeah. buildings. But I do come through the site probably twice, three times a week. Yeah. So. I mean, then you've seen that the trash like still. Gets I do, yeah. I, I, and then they'll yeah. be like, "Oh, you can go in this dumpster one day." Like I just, I don't understand why they don't have like a dumpster or something for every building or every other building. Like there's five buildings of a person. And the yeah. thing is, is like, I lived here with my parents in the unit right down the hall from where I am now. Like when they first opened, we were the first people in that that apartment. Like. It didn't used to be like this, you know. A lot of yeah, people are getting things boxes. delivered. There's a lot more boxes. You have to have yeah, better cars to work. <laughs> you know, like All it's the just have the smiley face on them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, ridiculous. Too. Like back uh, probably a year or two ago, probably two years. Um they had told us they're gonna replace that dump, that compact. Yeah, they did, yeah. They and did. It, but it's not just the it's not just the trash, it's also the cardboard because there's so many times that I go to get rid of cardboard and I'm like that's something light easy i can carry i can have one of my older kids carry like right. down get out of the house and i'm like oh well it's full let's try to smush it in there because i don't want to just let it blow all over the town like it's disgusting that they i don't know the condition they've gotten rid of gutters that's going to cause like mold in the it's just the whole place is, is well, i don't know if this is you guys or building department but like the um the vents for dryers are all you clogged. look up and you can see I've told Rick clogged. multiple times it's just a fire waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah. I, guess, I don't know if you guys fire department building the, the, the building, building department, the department. Yeah, that would be a big scale ventilation stuff. I, I work hand to hand with Tim. His yeah, office yeah. is directly next to mine. So the yeah. two of us will Yeah. Yeah, I know at one point we looked up at the apartment next to ours from outside the building. You can see oh, just scary. clumps. Yeah. Yeah. So that that technically you know, it doesn't get taken care of. Yeah, the five pops. They haven't yeah. done the yeah. vent cleanouts in years. Those were used to be every six months with the original management team. Fire panel's been going off for months in our months. And that's a okay. trouble. I took a video and sent it to my buddy who works with fire alarm systems. Yeah. There's an issue with the, the strobe somewhere in the building. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's will do anything. I called my father was a firefighter for 20 years. I called them, talked to my dad's old partner, and he's like, There's nothing we can do about it. Right. right. So it's, well, it's, well, the other thing too is you can get all the cards out there. You'll have Bruce and Paul Laura's email. You can email the stuff to us. Tim's is there too. Tim, Tim's Tim's there. There. So, so what happens is then they can get it. They can go into the specific unit. Yeah. Like I said, we usually canvas the outside areas because we don't want that trash will blow up in North Main Street yeah. or in the wetlands. Uh, it was pretty bad um, two Christmases ago. I mean, it went on. They got fined for 14 days. I was a nice guy. He took Christmas Eve and Christmas off. But after that, there was no manager and there was no Rick. Rick got hired about yeah. And then I mean, last a December. week after I yeah. fined him. And it was oh yeah, last it was last last December. Yeah, last, the trash was all the way out yeah. into the oh it was ridiculous. And I had people to... were stacking up couches and there was a um what do you call it? A demolition dumpster. That was Build three feet on the side next to our apartment. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, they just they don't they, take they, care of they it. They got to be. You can tell go out there and, you know. I really hope that you, I know you guys are very busy people, but I hope as a whole, you know, board and everything, you guys really look into just how JRK is managing the place. Yeah, so. They're not taking, you know, they, they take people with housing vouchers and then they try to raise the rent a thousand dollars. They're doing extremely illegal things. They're not. There's no code that they're applying, to, like abiding by, I should say. So we issued, like, I don't know, it's like 25 or 3,200 fines because it, it just until Rick got on board, and then at the last few times, you know, I called him and I said, I'm coming down. He says, I'm trying to get a dumpster person. I even called the dumpster company, was, I believe it's still on. Yeah. I called the regional manager and said, I don't care. This is the board of health. You get your truck out down there and empty that thing. Because if not, I'm sending you a fine. 
Yeah. Well, I don't really think it's Rick. I just think it's the whole company. It's not. So it's JRK is yeah. out of California. They came to a meeting virtually and they said, well, you know. I mean, he walked the, the property for the first time. In you know, years. like it was a, a pop and it got flooded. Anyway, separate issue. Um, someone couldn't live in there because it was flooded. The sewer. It's just the whole complex is giving, I feel like, Bellingham a really bad name. Like we grew up here, it's different for us, but. So many people are just trying to flee this down because you know this is supposed to be affordable and luxury apartments, and we haven't had a gate in a year and a half, and you know it's just been unsafe and unsafe. I don't know if it was better when it was the Jeffersons. I can't remember, but it was better. All I can tell you, I when I lived there, it was a lot better. It really all was. took over. All right, Benny, we have to we have to move okay. on on the agenda. Yeah. All right, okay. we're gonna leave you for the yeah, next. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have a couple of times we're to find the window. So we do on um, no, we do correspondence calendar. Yeah, so, okay, so let's do the correspondence yeah. October, November employee calendar. And um, by the way, when is time? I thought we already looked at this last time. Did something yeah, change? It's the same, oh, it's the same calendar. It's the same calendar. Okay, fine. Okay, then we got Halloween news. If you, Dress up to get a trick, a treat better. Yeah, come by to your office. Oh, I can't wait to see what Laura and Michelle dress up as this year. Uh, I already started decorating the door too. Okay, I got a cool, cool door decoration at a, at a uh, craft fair. Okay, so okay, uh, Judy, yeah. just actually, you know what? No, we did last time. Didn't we do just October? Yeah, yeah. This no, that we didn't we do November. Well, the November, November there too. Yeah, that's okay. Fine. Um, yeah, we didn't have a meeting at the beginning of October, so I added it to the package okay, got it, got it. Okay. and put November in too. Oh, okay. So we did have November last time. I don't remember. But that's no, good. only October that I emailed only October. to you. Okay. okay. So we're going to meet on so, the, so we're meeting on the 1st and the 15th for November. State elections on the 8th. Do you tell us anyway? Yeah, town meeting. In there. Yeah, town meeting. When, uh, yeah, 7 30. Uh, the 16th. Uh, if we have a, do we have a septic loan thing? I mean? Yes. Okay. So I'll be there if one of you guys wants to show up. Whatever. 16th, 7 30 at the high school, right? Yeah. High school. Somebody have it? Yeah, I'll try to be there. Okay. Thanks, Trish. I do use the Amigo there too. So. Yeah. And, just, um, just remind me, okay? Yeah, I will. We can. And I, I believe it said in here. Four hundred thousand. I thought it was three hundred, but either way, if it's four, oh, that's fine. Um, we try to do something different. The more we get, the merrier. Um, I guess since we're sort of on that, basically, how how far into our current loan are we in terms of money's left? To be there, there is much left. Okay, a few thousand. That's it. Okay. So how, how much we, did he say is left? Uh, Laura, what, what do we have left? Like two or three thousand. No, we act, actually we just asked for 150, and that's going to cover about five more people, and then we're, we're done. Maybe so there's nothing left after that. I know we were. I thought we had a little bit left, but so no, if, there's if, nothing. There won't be anything left after that. Okay. okay, so Laura, if we approve the November one, how fast will we get the money allotted? Do you know? Um, it just takes a couple of months, but we should be okay. good. Okay. It'll be winter, and we winter won't have as yeah. many people. Okay. But I, we, I, but, but we're not going to approve anybody until we have the funds in hand. Correct. That's correct. Yep. Yeah, yeah we we've actually we we've approved a couple of preliminary, but they haven't started. Nor will I have them start. Okay. They'll just be on the waiting list. Okay. They can get in line on the waiting list. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so I will remind you, Trish. Okay. Next thing was the food grading system. Um, on the goal. Oh, that was what Robbie had talked about the last meeting. Last time, yeah. So nothing new on that. Uh, we just I did talk to to um, Oxbridge. Um, what they what they do there is they post it on their web page, but they weren't posting in the, the store at the at the location or at the restaurant. Um, I, and then I know Robbie was going to check out a few other places as well okay. and see see what they do and see if we can refine it or up. Our thoughts on what we want to do. Okay. And um, a number of places, um, they post the actual inspection report 
to the website so they have the full inspection report available. Actually, Uxbridge does the same. It doesn't just have their, actually, I didn't see where a section where it just had their, their letter grade. It actually has the full inspection report. It's got the full inspection um, report. It's, it, they use the food pro code program. Um, yes. I don't think they give it a letter grade. I think they just give it a, a, a numerical grade. Okay. Yeah, it has it has the score out of 100. Um, right. Unfortunately, where that system is specifically designed to automatically do that. So as soon as the way that they have it set up, it automatically just, they post to the website. Um, but I don't know if Permanize does the same. So we can only pursue that route. Just I don't know if we have the the same capabilities there if you wanted to to do that as opposed to putting a physical number or a letter grade up in the establishment. But my prayer is still having the letter on the establishment so people don't have to try to, you know, go in to find a report to go on the website because even even that in itself can be clunky. I tried to pull one up on, from Uxbridge the other day and couldn't find anything past 2021. So <laughs> everything yeah. has this kind of, you know, got, give and take. I wonder, I wonder what uh, system they use. Oxbridge has food code. Oxbridge had used, um, yeah, Food Code Pro that we used previously. Oh. Okay. So gotcha. our old program could have easier to do than the new one. Is that what we're saying? It, it, it does it automatically. It would just be something where we would have to add it up at the end of the report. Okay. Do you um do you think the old program or the new program is better? I pre I personally believe that the old program was leaps and bounds over the current program. Why did we change the program? It uh, it's the one that's integrated. It, it's the one that's integrated throughout town hall. So everything is is logged into um, the address. So any department can can find anything on the same address. Whereas Food Code Pro, um, when we were working with them, was just the base software. So they, they didn't have the same connectivity. Trish, okay. if, you, if you have a, a free moment, come in. Um, if you give Robbie a heads up, the two of us can give you a quick run through how the, how the program works and how it interfaces and stuff if, you, if you're curious. No, I'm not curious like that. Okay. <laughs> if I'm never going to use it, I don't want to learn it. My brain has too much information in it already. <laughs> all right. I was so, just curious if it was better or not and why we changed. That's all. They, they both have their pros and cons. Yeah. So the current program, though, that we use in the uh, permitized, though, uh, I'll assume from last year, all the problem we had with permitting and stuff, that that's not going to happen again. It's, it, it, it's gotten It's gotten better, right, Robbie? Okay. Yeah, it, we still we still find a bug every once in a while, but it's, okay, but it's not you know, random. just it's not yeah, it's not not like it was previously. And okay. to to clarify what I said earlier, from an inspector standpoint, Food Code Pro was you know leaping leaps and bounds ahead, but more or less because it's it was designed inspector first as opposed to administration first. So Permitize okay. covers more of the back end, whereas you know the Food Code Pro was in the field. So yeah. yeah. You do have, you have a good jump on the permits already. The, the okay. reminder letters have gone out, and we've had quite a response. Uh, okay. Laura and I have been very busy. Okay. So one other quick thing, uh, it probably out on our goals before we get the health agent updates. Uh, we can inform that you know that at least two more people uh, in Bellingham have gotten brain cancer. So. As I told you a year ago, maybe two years ago, certainly six years ago when Sue passed, the number one cancer in Bellingham, I believe has been raining for the last six years, has been brain. Don't ask me why, you know. And I think one of the things that Kelly and Trish said to me was, you know, try to work into it. At the time I was trying to look at um, a student that gets credit and then gets um, to do what we call localized epidemiology it needs to be someone that's a, in a master of public health or an epidemiology PhD program. And if they're out of Northeastern or a few other colleges or universities, they can be, let's say, put on a registry with the DPH and we can request that person and they would be assigned to us. Um, the school usually has the person pay for their the cost work. 
but the report and stuff like that would come to the town, no charge. Um, whether they could find it in one year, I don't know, but we clearly have something that keeps making the good news, I guess it's not good news, but the brain cancer is usually extremely long, long-term. You don't perish in a very short period of time. It's usually, especially the inoperable ones, um, they last five years usually. A lot were caused in Vietnam veterans from dioxin, Agent Orange. Uh, a lot were caused from people who worked for chemical companies and exposed to uh, certain kind of chemical compounds, amines, and a few other things that typically the central nervous system, uh, let's say, type agents that they get to the central nervous system, primarily brain, but also spinal column, and they cause cancers. Um, and those two particular organs are pretty hard to dissect out most of it, unless it's related to an ear or an eye socket, they can usually get to the cancer. But if it's you know in the medulla area area, the you know, the central part of the brain, the stem, they're usually inoperable. Um, but I don't know. I mean, a couple of people, how I got this recently was there was a little bit of blurb on Bellingham Buzz, and then I contacted one of the people on private messaging, and, you know, I do know one of the people who looked out. I said, geez, you know, how come we don't hear about this? Well, who's going to report to the Board of Health that, you know, someone in their family's got cancer? But someone said, what about the war? So I don't want to get into that yet, um, but that would be something that the analysis should do. And I believe applications, you know, yeah, no, I'm making a short story. Um, applications have to get in by January. So I've asked Laura to see if she can contact DPH, figure out how we get one of these applications. Uh, and then we'll just request someone with that skill set to be assigned to us. Uh, many, many years ago, person I worked with at the Army base, their sister was uh, Northeastern University. So she sat and her part was, uh, my expert public health was administration, not um, medical side. But she attended every one of our meetings for a year, wrote us a report. And you know, how, like what the board does, what the board did, you know, good, what the board needs to improve on. Because it was more like uh, administration of uh, our department. So it was interesting, you know, I, I appreciate it when I got it, it was, uh, a lot of work, but we need to get somebody who's got the medical side, the epidemiology side, uh, that they're trying to get a degree in and, you know, maybe- Oh, so Benny, why don't we keep it on the goals? I don't think okay. that any of the kids are looking for internships right now. Um, no, I, I don't think so. I think it's usually, when I last looked, I think it was about July. I think it was the September thing was already filled. I wasn't sure if there's a January approach to it, you know. Well, let's have Laura just add it to the goals and we'll just keep it on there. Again. Okay. Okay. Um, and we'll keep it on there until we get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I'd like to get somebody to go to help. And then we can find, figure out if they can or through everything in town. You know, I don't think it's industry. You know, someone brought up, could it be the power plants? I said, I don't think so. It's all over the town. There's no rhyme or reason to it six years ago. I found them in old people, young people, completely spread all over the town. But there was like, I don't know, like 13 cases. It was the number one, you know, ovarian and uterine cancers were down at four and five. I think stomach was two or three. I can't remember, let's say three. I don't know what was number two, but um, you know, you don't know. Sometimes people get it from work. Sometimes people get it from. I mean, it could be food. It could be a number of things. It we could, could be say anything, here. yeah. But I just thought, you know, we should look at this since it's going to be a rating thing. Right. And like I said, internet won't cost us any money. And all we get out of it is maybe some information that we can share with other departments and figure out what's going on here. Yep. So, so let's, keep, let's keep it on the goals. and. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Health agent updates. Bruce. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 did you I did. But yeah. I had. Okay. With the, the meetings there. Okay. So, um, plans reviews. Uh, we have two plans. Two plans. So, other folks are ruling. Yeah. So, one of you guys got the. Uh, you don't have them, right? So, I guess I'll. Okay. Okay. I'd like to request a local upgrade approval for. 24 Valley View Road, um, 310 CMR 154051H to allow the system to be installed three feet above the groundwater where four is required. So, where's 24? Okay, I, appro I approve that. Okay, second that. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carried. Okay, great. Yeah. The next one is uh okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to request a local upgrade approval for 21 Robert Street and it's uh 310 CMR 15.4051H again, where to allow three feet where a groundwater separation from the septic base where four feet is required. Motion to approve. I second that. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, say it's so okay. And then you get the bills. Okay, let me sign these. And then one of you guys, uh, Bruce will get it to one of you guys to sign. We at least need two signatures. So let me just sign this off. Fish, if I drop them on my way home, can you sign them? I'll pick them up on my way into it. <laughs> Put in your mailbox. Yeah, you can. Yeah, just stick them in my mailbox and I'll sign them. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. One more set. No, it's in. It's just two. No, no, I'm saying it. It's kind oh, of the size of the A nice new stamp here. Okay. Okay, so um, we have a bill for the Solomon DNA and hospice for October 1st through October 31st, 600. $66.66. Now we're going to try to change that to a, a seven. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'd like to make a well, let's take it. Get approval for uh, W. Mason, $86.38 for ink cartridges, pads, and color notes. Motion to approve. I second that. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carry. Okay, next one is W. B. Mason for $66.59 for binder clips. Uh, drive, a uh, flash drive, and a keyboard mouse. Motion to approve. I second that. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. No carry. And the next one is, wait a They didn't do multiple all together, did they? Oh, okay. We're going to redo it instead of doing it the way I did it. I should look, follow the thing. WB Mason for $179.92. So we'll the cover each individual one. So motion second. Second. Okay. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, next one is Gatehouse Media for $138.26. And that's for. Uh, that's for. Oh.
right? It's uh, public notices. Gatehouse Media is uh, just oh. the public notices. So. Okay. That's 138. Motion. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, motion to approve. Okay. I All second that. To say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carry. And then we have um, Energizer battery pack for uh, from Home Depot for fifty three dollars and sixty one cents. That's batteries for the camera in the office. Okay. Motion to approve. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carried. Okay. And the last one is twenty two dollars and eighty eight cents for Amazon business uh, supply. Is that what it is? Safety vest. Oh, safety vest. Okay. Um, so $22.88 for Amazon. Second on that. Motion to approve. Okay. All those that. in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, say so carried. Okay. Okay. Yes. We've covered everything. We've covered everything. Anybody else have anything else before we call? Or we can make a motion to. Um, Hold no, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Both the states are carried. We're adjourned. Good night. See you. Good night, everyone. Well, see, actually, maybe I'll see.